YouTube artist, I'm Kelly Hernick and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be exploring Isaro watercolors. I was so impressed by the color choices of the Isaro watercolors that I want to play around with a color wheel and see what kind of basic colors they can create. Now I know I'm going to have not a very nice green because I have this Payne's Gray here which is really deep. It's not very blue at all, but I'm still going to try it because it's probably going to create a green that I like. I already like this olive green, so if I can get a shading color for that olive green, I would be really happy. So in this exercise, I'm going to be using the raw sienna, Venetian red, and Payne's gray, and we'll see what happens. Again, it is Azaro. It is raw sienna, Venetian red, and Payne's Gray. I've already got them out on my palette. Raw Sienna, Venetian Red, and Payne's Gray. I'm going to start with the Raw Sienna here at the top. And remember the Raw Sienna in this color was kind of grainy, so I'm gonna add more water. I think part of it was I wasn't adding enough water to this, which is usual for me. <laughs> I usually don't add a lot of water to my watercolors, which is kind of funny actually. It's already going on much smoother. I'm much happier with the way this went on, so I think the problem was just me not having enough water, actually. Okay. It's a lovely raw sienna. It's a little splotchy. Now we're going to go to Venetian Red. This was the prettiest Venetian Red. I just really, really loved this color. It's more of an orange red to me, which is probably why I like it better than a pink red. Make sure I have water. Isn't it pretty? I like the tone. I like the way that it goes down on paper. It goes really nice. Wow, so pretty. <laughs> and then our next one is Payne's Gray, which is going to represent our blue. And you can see how dark this is. And if you look at this palette, it really is quite on the dark side, right? Not a bright yellow, not a bright red. If you're new to color wheels, these are called primary colors. 
So a primary color means that you cannot mix them. So a yellow, a true yellow can't be mixed, a true red can't be mixed, and a true blue can't be mixed. So if you have a color wheel, you'll see these are much brighter, the yellow, the red, and the blue here, than what I have. These can be mixed. <laughs> The true ones, the true primaries, which are the yellow, the red, and the blue, cannot be mixed. Now we're going to do what is called secondary colors. Secondary colors are when you take a primary and you mix the two primaries together. So we're going to mix yellow and red and make an orange. We're going to mix yellow and blue and make a green. And then we're going to mix blue and red and make a violet. So those are called secondaries. You try to have equal parts, so equal red, equal yellow, if possible. You know, here, I really don't want as much blue as I want red. I'm usually a more red-violet person than a blue-violet. So let's see what kind of orange we can mix here, because remember, red and yellow is orange. Ooh, this is pretty. I say pretty too much, sorry. <laughs> I like a really rich orange because fall here is really beautiful and you need a lot of orange in your coloration. I've got a piece of scrap paper I wanna see. I think I need a little bit more yellow. And I need a lot more water, I can tell you that. It's almost dragging. I can feel it. It's not going smoothly. That's better. Wow, what a great color. I need more water still. Tried to get a nice blend between the two. I think I did it here. I could probably have used a little bit more yellow, but this is a lovely color. It's a very earthy orange. And you can see it's kind of blotchy. I don't think I have enough water. So I'm going to come in there and add a little bit more water and let's see if I can make that work for me. Remember, I am mixing it with the raw sienna, though, which is kind of a blotchy color as well. Now we're going to mix the red and the blue and get some kind of violet. Now you can see it's on the red-violet side here. I'm going to touch just a little bit more blue to it. I'm looking for a color kind of in between. I think that's a nice color actually. Yes, that's a color that I would use. See how much smoother this is going on than that orange. Now we've got the yellow plus blue to make a green, and I know this green is not going to be very green at all. We'll give it our best shot. It's kind of like a dark olive, which is very pretty. It's 
sorry, which is very lovely. <laughs> okay. So you can see here, this is what those three colors made. You can see that green is very dark and that's because of this. If this was a more intense blue, you would get a brighter green, but I'm okay with this. Remember, I have olive green in there, which is quite nice. This would make a great shading color to add to that olive green to dull it down just a little bit. Now what I wanna do on the side here is I wanna take these colors from like yellow at the top and then adding Venetian red. And let's just do like I normally do my swatches to see the color variation that we can get in between these. So when you're looking at a color wheel, between the yellow and the green, let's do between the yellow and the orange, there is a yellow orange. Now those are called tertiary. So think of one, two, threes. So the ones are the yellow, red, blue. The twos are the orange, green, and violet. The number threes, tertiaries, are the ones between the orange and the yellow, the yellow and the green, so anyone in between these two colors. So where the yellow and the orange, there would be a yellow orange. And the primary color always gets listed first. So between the red and the orange, it wouldn't be orange red, it would be red orange. Then between the red and the violet, you would have red violet. And then between the blue and the violet, you would have blue violet. Between the blue and the green, you would have blue green. Between the yellow and the green, you would have yellow green. So there are more tertiaries than there are primaries and secondaries. Just remember that it's always between the primaries. So it's between and then it's between again. So one, two, three, it's just the easy way to remember it. If you can remember yellow, red, and blue, you're good. So for this exercise, I'm gonna start with the raw sienna here. And I'm gonna slowly add the Venetian red. I hope slowly. <laughs> and I'm looking for a color change every time. Try to mix all this in one area here. I'm in love with this orange. More Venetian. More Venetian, that's a little bit much. Wow, <laughs> I do wanna wet those to see what this would do. Remember, it didn't move in the first, in my first trial because I had to drop blotted, you know, just with my brush. So I wanna see if this creates any more movement by actually flinging the water on there. Okay, let's add a little bit more Venetian. <laughs> I'm rinsing my brush and I'm going to go straight to Venetian now. Splash again. 
So I want you to see the different layers. Do you see all the different colors now? It gets, it's a little more golden up here, and it's a little deeper red down here. And so probably these first ones would be between here, and then these darker ones will be between here. Now we're going to go between the red and the violet. Need more water here. Okay, we're going to start with Venetian up here. Such a beautiful red. <laughs> I can't even get over it. So I'm going to add the tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. You know it's going to sneak up on me and give me a lot. There we go. So it's just turning it a little to the violet now. A little richer. A little more pains. Gonna get those wet. A little more pains. You can see it's slowly going to the blue side, slowly. These are really nice, rich darks here. Okay, more water. Starting to drag a little. I need a little more water to make it flow easier. Oh, look at that. And go to straight Payne's Gray right now. Okay, look at all those varieties. Let's let me bring it closer. Look at all that. So you can see between the red and the violet there, that would be right here. And then between the blue and the violet, it would be these deeper colors here. That's a really dark eggplant purple, or violet as they call it. I'm going to start with yellow for the greens, just because otherwise it would take me forever to add enough yellow to get to the, the green on the other side. So I'm going to start up here and work my way down instead of going from dark all the way to light. Okay. Starting with raw sienna, now let's add the tiniest bit of Payne's Gray. Going very carefully, I don't want to turn it too quickly. It's 
It's a pretty green. That's a very nice green right there. So you can see the difference of taking it one little section at a time here. It gives you more value so you can play with it a little longer. And you're starting to see just the impact that the colors really have on one another by doing this longer study like this. You're right, I haven't been adding my water. Hopefully it's not too late, I hope. A beautiful blue-green here. I think one more and then we will go to straight Payne's gray. Going straight to Payne's gray now. The richness of that color is amazing. Okay, let's explore those greens now. I'm going to turn them this way so you can really see. So look at how yellow they are, and then they start turning into this like khaki army green, and then they go into this blue or green. So this part would be in between the blue and the green, and then these lighter colors up here will be between the yellow and the green. So now hopefully that you understand a little bit about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Tertiary, you have a lot more options usually because they can swing either way in a lot of different ways. You can step these out, you know, to a lot more colors if you really wanted. But I also wanted to show you something. I really love this orange. So what I'm going to do is I have a little half pan here that I have my ISA for Azaro, and then I wrote Venetian Red plus Raw Sienna on it and I'm gonna make a little pan for myself now I don't know if you know that you can do this I'm gonna push this out of the way so it can dry so I have raw sienna here I'm gonna put a little bit more out because I actually want to mix this with a palette knife I want to fill a nice little half pan with that I just like a little skinny palette knife. You can use plastic ones. You can actually use your brush. I go a little faster with a palette knife. So I'm gonna bring this yellow over and I'm gonna just start mixing. Now when you mix it, just think of your using eggs and butter like when you make a cake. So you just wanna work it all together. You don't wanna see any streaks of either color. So I don't wanna see a pile of yellow like right now. Do you see that it's a pile of yellow there? I don't want to see that. I want it all to be mixed really well. I don't want to see the streaks of red and yellow in there. You want it well mixed. Usually I mix on palette paper or like deli paper because it's a lot easier to get off, but I already have this, so I'll just do, can continue doing this. Let's see here. Now I need more yellow than that because I am trying to fill a half pan too. I want a little bit. Go. I 
I'm mixing all the way to the bottom and I'm pressing kind of flat. So pressing it down really nice. Okay, I'm not seeing much streaks. You can see on my palette knife here. Let's see. See that it's pretty solid color. It's not, you're not seeing streaks of yellow or streaks of red. But now I need to test it. I need to add a little bit more yellow to it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> this is why you always add to the lighter color as well. So if I was to mix a green, I would start with the yellow and then I would add the blue. Back to mixing, mix it all around, pull from the edges. What I like about using a palette knife instead of the brush is you can get it all off. You know, when you're using a brush, a lot gets lost in the bristles. So with the palette knife, you can just smash it down. Okay, let me have a look at this color. I want to see what a little bit more red does to it. I'm going to touch a tad more red into it. Oh yeah, that's good. Now this is a great way to make custom colors for yourself. So now I just lift it up. Excuse that noise. And you can see you got almost all of it off, which is why I like using a palette knife instead of a brush. If you want, you can always clean it up with this brush. So you're not wasting any paint and just stick it on the side. And there's my orange. I'm going to do a little test on my paper here. Pretty. <laughs> that is about where I wanted it. You can see that it's more on the orange side than the red side. So if I'm looking up here, it's more along these lines, which is where I wanted it to be. I didn't want it too red. I wanted it more in the middle there. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, I've got everything labeled. And you can see I've labeled yellow primary raw sienna, orange secondary raw sienna plus Venetian red, red primary, Venetian red, violet secondary, Venetian red plus Payne's gray, blue primary, Payne's gray, green secondary, Payne's gray plus raw sienna, and then I labeled raw sienna, Venetian red, Venetian red, Payne's gray, raw sienna, Payne's gray. And look how beautiful these turned out. Such a really nice color range. I've got blue greens and yellow greens. I've got blue violets and red violets. And then I've got yellow orange and red orange. And then don't forget my mix here that I'm putting into the half pan. 
So I hope this gave you a little bit into color mixing and a color wheel and the explanation of primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. If you were inspired by today's video, please like, comment, or subscribe. My channel would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.